right, good day, good people. Welcome to Daily Border Crossings. I am so excited and beyond thrilled about today's guest. There's a good chance if you've been alert to news or social media or radio or other information uh, mediums these days that you have seen or at least heard of my guest. He caught the world off guard um, with his illustrations, his medical illustrations, leaving um, one of the hosts on CBS News saying it was just a thing that that he didn't know, realize that that he needed. Um, graduate of the University of Uyo, currently the chief medical illustrator at the Journal of Global Neurosurgery and headed to um, Kiev Medical School in, in Ukraine. Please welcome G. Dia Barry Ibe to the show. Welcome to the show, Cheese. <laughs> name. I'm totally thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you for thank you so much for being here. Um, so so as I mentioned, you, your face, your name, your illustrations are all over the place right now. What have these past few weeks been like for you? Oh, it's been so overwhelming, so 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 overwhelming. Because I mean, first of all, I did not expect this. I did not expect any of these at all. To be honest with you. And, uh, but I mean, I just had to cope with the train. I had to uh, um, adjust my time, adjust everything. It's just, I think I cried actually. I did cry at some point because- Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. That was like, oh, I didn't expect this at all. So it's been amazing. It's been an amazing week so far. It's been an amazing year. I bet it's been, it's been awesome for me and I'm not you, right? It's just been awesome to see you. Um, so you graduated last year, right? Yes, last year. Okay, and so where are you now? Because that the um, University of UO was in um, Nigeria. Is that right? Nigeria, yes. Okay, so where are you now? I'm still in Nigeria. So I'm to resume school January next year at Kiev. Okay, okay. And then, um, so yeah, I was going to ask about that. Why, um, why the you why Ukraine or why Kiev uh, in particular? Okay, um, so. Kiev was an option for me because, uh, I mean, I had not a better option. So I had tried to school in the US. Uh, I mean, the chances were actually very high. UK mm. was high. So I, I said, okay, let me try Ukraine. I know that it's quite easy to get to Ukraine. And yes. uh, the school fees actually were not that expensive. So, I, I mean, I, I felt I could, I could work as a medical student and pay off my school because I, I'm actually self-funded. So I felt I could work also and pay my school fees. So that's why I chose um, um, Ukraine to go. That's why I just keep medical university. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, so you're actually the first guest for my new tie dye episode of Daily Border Crossing. So quick story: when I was at uh, Harvard at the Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education, I majored in TIE, which stands for Technology Innovation and Education. And I had been an educator and a journalist for years. And wanted to take things to the next level, right? So I applied to Harvard's Ed School to the TIE, Technology Innovation Education Program. And I was also doing quite a bit of diversity and equity work uh, at the time. And so I became one of um, the Ed School's equity and inclusion fellows. And so one thing that I would notice um, when I was in my graduate program is that some of my fellow students and some professors and some guest speakers um, at times could all use some work as it pertained to diversity and inclusion. Plus, you know, I was thinking about how um, the majority of people at the top of tech and ed tech companies kind of look the same, right? Um, there's not a lot of diversity in those areas. So I knew a lot of those companies hire um, people from Ivy League schools like Harvard. And so I wanted to do my part in helping educate like that sector of people about DEI. started what's called TIEDIE, so T-I-E-D-I-E, -E, which is an initiative that focused on technology, innovation, and education, and diversity, inclusion, and equity. And I began that whole exploration. So this season on my show, I'm bringing a monthly segment of that to the podcast. And um, so if ever, I feel like anyone embodied both of those things, the T-I-E and the D-I-E, in person and, and through your work, it is you. And so thanks again for being uh, the show's first TIEDIE guest. 
But um, I'm wondering about your background with this. I think one of the things that I love about you is the fact that you're doing illustrations and medical work. I feel like most neurosurgeons or aspiring neurosurgeons are not also artists, right? Or most artists are not necessarily in the medical field. So it's super impressive that you're doing both. But can you talk about that? Like, which came first? Or were you a child that liked to draw or like were curious about medical stuff? Like, how, how, did, how did these two things come together? I think uh, I think both came together sincerely because um, when I was a child, I was very creative, okay? Mm. But I wasn't an artist. I mean, I never drew as a child, okay? Really? So what I <laughs> no, I did not. So um, when I was a child, what I do most time was to was to create um, was to make um, constructions. I would make a moving car. I would make an aeroplane. I would construct a whole lot of things. So I was just creative, and uh, like so you were constructing just, these structures out of. Like, like there would be three-dimensional yeah. things, not drawing. Okay. Not, not drawing, just to construct. I can get a, a carton, make a tire out of nothing, make um, an engine and propel it. So I was just this creative person as a very, very young person. And also in turn, I, I love making analysis on, on lizard. So most times I would just go to the, I mean, I'll just get um, an animal. I would try to analyze what's, what, what, to be look, what to look like. I would... Um, I made some injections to the to the lizard. I mean, it was just amazing, <laughs> amazing. So I mean, I, from 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 inception, I, I love medicine. I wanted to be a medical doctor, and I knew that I was also very artistic. So growing up, I realized that I could I could make a balance between those two because I realized mm-hmm. that there's there is so much um, art in medicine, and um, I mean, medicine is easy when you apply art in it because really, yeah. As a surgeon, as a surgeon, it, it because surgeon is more of art. Thinking as an artist makes surgery quite more interesting. So I realized that, yeah, yeah. So I could apply my art skill as a surgeon and create more impact in the world. I mean, the world hasn't seen anything yet. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're coming out there stronger. Hmm. So, so you, what, how did you know you wanted to be a surgeon? So, um, I, 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 as I said, um, I was this creative person. Yes. And I, I knew I knew that um I like from the very moment I knew I, I thought about medicine, all I thought was surgery. I, okay. I didn't know if there were other parts of medicine, if they were uh, practicing medicine or just general practitioner, but all I knew was just to be a surgeon. And okay. most of the I watched was all surgery uh, so it's just for my interest to become a surgeon. And and whenever I, I saw doctors walking out, I was like so amazed. I, I mean, I'm just going to be a doctor one day so that's I just love surgery in general. okay 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 um so okay um a listener one of the my um daily border crossings listeners and a fellow uh harvard graduate school of education alum constant gist had asked um she wanted me to ask the question are you having challenges um, at this point with creation um or distribution of the charts is there anything challenging about getting those charts out there Sorry, give me what I guess the charts, the illustrations and the things that you're doing, like, are you, I don't know if, you, if you're the, if you are in charge, maybe you're not, maybe there isn't anything challenging, but I think it, it seems so surprising to the world, you know, it, it, because I don't know, just, well, because the world hadn't seen it and it, was there any pushback? Like how, how did that, what was that process like with, you know, cause have you always right. done it with people with, have you always like had, you know, black people or, you know, people of color in your, in your work? Uh, so um, I, I'm actually a self-taught maker illustrator. So um, being that I'm self-taught, I, I started with a computer mouse and a very old computer. So that's how I started and that's how I learned. Um, <laughs> uh, so from the very first time I, I started drawing, there were all black people in my drawings, all black people. I mean, if you go to my Instagram handle, yes, from, from the very first time I started learning, they were all black drawings, all black drawings. And- um, Love it. It, it, it's it's amazing that so most times most times I I, I would do those drawings and share them and I wouldn't have any reaction from people I wouldn't have any comments nothing I mean but I knew that this was the right cause so f- for me right now it's more of um it's more of a purpose no longer a passion right now because I understand the need the need of this in the medical school. And uh, so it's it's really been a very difficult journey, I would say, because as I said, I'm a self-taught illustrator. I started last year, July, during the lockdown. 
So yeah. teaching myself all of yeah. this, everything I knew has been very difficult. And um, and to be honest with you, one year as an illustrator, I had never made any money for it. I mean, but I had done jobs. People just um, get my work and do not pay for them. And I mean, mm. that's fine because that's a learning process. So, I mean, that's, that's uh, I mean, it's, it's really a whole lot of challenge, a whole lot of long, difficult challenge. I mean, yeah. So when did, when did you start? You know, you said you, you've always done black people in your illustrations. When did that start? The illustration? From the very first day, from the very first day I started drawing, like from the very moment I started doing medical illustration, which was last year, July, it was always been black illustrations. Yeah, but like how long ago? Wait, when was that? You've been doing last it? Last year, July. Wait, Just what? You've only been doing this since like, for a year and a half? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might, I wonder if that seems like, I don't know if that seems like a long time to you. I, I assume you had just been doing it for years and years and we we're just hearing about it. But, and also the level of detail for somebody who's self-taught and like you, it looks like you've been perfecting this for years. They, these, okay. That's impressive. That is amazing. That <laughs> you just like only a year and a half. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, so it's, it's, that's why I said it was a difficult process. So, because, um, here in Nigeria, yes. we have a lot of power, power supply issues. Okay, hmm. so from where I from where I stay, where I live, um, there is no power supply. So most times, I would pay for for like one good year, I would make a transportation to my church where there's always power supply to draw for one good year. So every day drawing, every day learning. I think that's just how I got better and I perfected the skills, and. Um, and one thing that helped me was that I was always questioning processes. So most okay. times I, I would look at how professionals um, have drawn theirs. And so because on, on YouTube, there's no tutorials on YouTube. So it made it very difficult. So while, while I looked at other people, how they've done theirs, I would think, okay, because I have a computer mouse, how can I do this as a computer with my little tool that I have? So mm. um, process like that just shaped my mind. Just um, I, Because I know that challenges build our creativity. So yes. in, because I had little tools to work with, I had to rethink, I had to recreate my mind to be able to conform with, with what I have to create those drawings. So that's just how I, I grew from making details. I mean, if you see my old drawings, they were not that detailed, but because I had used the little tools that I have to make um, little changes, yes. I think that's pretty much how I grew to become more detailed in my drawings. Okay. Well, and that's, that's what I, you know, when I was talking about the TIE, the tie dye piece, the technology piece of this, I mean, the art, I, I think sometimes people forget how much art in, involves technology. And I'm like, this, these are digital illustrations. Um, I mean, you can do art with drawing and, and stuff, you know, by hand, but these are di digital illustrations. And so there's this whole technology component, um, this whole STEM science, there's science, there's tech, there's education. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I can't say enough about about how exciting it is. And, and I, you know, one of the things that I think is so important, I know you've talked a lot in your interviews and things that I've read about, about why it's important. Um, you know, I, it, it's important for me when I think about it to just like normalize things, right? Like it, it, because, because otherwise one norm is, is um, one group or, or so is, is what is, normalized. And, and two quick examples of that. Um, years and years ago, I worked at a factory um, right out of high school. I was like, this, this, is not, this is not for me long term, but I worked there for a while. And we had to put these tubes on this conveyor belt. And there was this one, these certain tubes that were kind of a, a beige peachy color and they called them flesh. And I was like, well, why are we called like, do you mean like flesh, like what's under the skin? Is that what you feel like what colors under the skin? But they meant that, no, these are skin color. And I'm like, what that's so but that's the way they refer to them and, and everybody called it that and nobody questioned it but I did and another um example um you know that was at the adult level but another thing that happened when I was teaching um I was teaching at this independent school and I was teaching PK right so it's kids that are four years old and one day I was talking to this little boy it's a little white boy um cute kid and we were just talking and he was telling me you know what he did the night before and he said he was building with Legos and he said you know I was making this thing I was using skin color Legos and I said, what, it, what, is that? what does that even mean, skin color Legos? And he said, I, I said, he said, you know, skin color. And I said, do you mean like my skin or, or your skin? Like what, what color? And he said, he, I'll never forget this. He said, no, but he said, Miss Fletcher, I mean my skin, real skin. 
And I thought, and I, you know, we had, had a whole conversation about, mm, let's talk about what skin is and what it means and what's really not, but he was four. And so he's getting this early impression of what the world is and how he was making sense of it. And so that's another reason that I'm excited about what you're doing, because it can just get the, it normalizes a different thing starting early if people see it this way. And so does that, is that part of what, what you wanted to do to kind of normalize things? Yes. Um, so uh, like, that's just the goal to make things very normal because, and, and, I'm, and I'm so much sure that from now on, think, from now on rather, things would get very normal because, um, I mean, just about today, um, El Servi, I reached out that, I mean, El Servi is one of the big guys that published medical textbooks. So um, it, it's, it's amazing that if um, El Servi had decided to include black drawings in that test, medical textbook, I mean, the change is already here. Wow. So, and I really think already be normalized from there. Yes. So, I mean, this is, that, that, that's, that, um, I mean, my goal is to make things normal. And also, um, it's, it's not just about me now, it's just about everybody. Because, of course, I, 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 I can't walk alone to normalize things, but if you come together as a system, as, as a community, Absolutely. working together, creating this change, I believe it will be much better and much easier. Yes, so, yes. I, I mean, it's, that's like be inclusive it. exactly so it doesn't have to be one way and 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 i feel like some of the the naysayers you know you've been praised a lot and a lot of people are welcoming welcoming what you're doing but there are some people who say this isn't necessary i i personally think it is because why not include everybody but how do you deal with naysayers do you just ignore them or how do you deal with that i just ignore them because first of all i have a name to uphold to okay so um, <laughs> um yes people say a lot of um things that it's not necessary. So most times I like I think about it, why is it not necessary? Because I mean people are not experienced, people are not used to these things. I mean this is this is I've been a problem for a like, for a long, long time now. Then exactly. the change, the why is the change not necessary? People say a whole lot of comments that uh, uh, um why black drawing they should all be white. I, I, it's just amazing to hear that. So I mean <laughs> That makes no sense to me. And they, they say things like, oh, it doesn't matter. Why does it, why does it have to be black? It doesn't matter what color it is. If you say it doesn't matter, then why can't it be black, right? Like, what, why, what are you saying exactly? It's amazing because now I'm not advocating that all drinks should be black. Now right. I'm just saying that they should, black should also be inclusive. Included, I mean, absolutely. Be, yeah, there should be a balance. So, the, and people just misconstrue everything. And it's amazing. It's amazing that you say that. But but it's I I noticed that yeah. whenever change is about to occur, people um, oppose change. Absolutely. So that's that's a normal thing. That's just normal uh, actual people. So I mean, I basically didn't answer people because that's just it. People oppose right. change, and because that's something good, and people always oppose it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll start to wrap up. Um, I noticed when you you've been like I was noticing on your LinkedIn that you've been excited about promoting your, you know, the different opportunities that are happening for you. And I noticed you giving credit to and thanking God, something I do often. Can you talk about the ways God has been instrumental for you. Hmm. I would, I, I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a deep Christian and, and I love God a lot. And um, not to sound very spiritual, but everything in my life, I mean, there, 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 there are a whole lot of professionals who have been in this field for about 30 years, but I'm just one year in this, and this mm. change has happened in my life. So mm. it's something beyond my control, beyond, something beyond my imagination. So I just give up credit to God because none of this would have been my personal work. Because to be to honest with you, yes, the day I did that drawing, I had a fight in my spirit. I had a struggle mm. in my spirit. I mean, yeah, I didn't want to do that drawing. I did not want to do it. The but baby, just, the one with the baby, the mother and the... Yes. Why, yes. What do you think? Why, why didn't you want to? No, that, that's because I was, before then, I was denied a visa to go to school. So everything just turned out very mm. sad for me and nothing was working out for me. So I just felt I didn't want to do anything at that moment, but I just knew that I had to just keep on working because I felt so so addicted to my work. And um, so the day I did this drawing, yeah, I had a prompt in my spirit to do that. So mm. I was just thinking, thinking, thinking. And uh, so I just, I just did it. And it, it's amazing to know that I had posted this drawing like some days before it went viral. So it's not because it's mm. not like I posted it and it the same day. So it's amazing how God works. I'm a Christian and, and I, I prayed about it. And mm. it, it's just amazing that that the prayer before the drawing went viral, God kept leading me to make prayers that period. I mean, I just kept looking up the night to make prayers that night. Yeah. And 
it's amazing. It's amazing it that ah God, God is faithful. I would say God is. I just give him all the glory. I mean, I, I talk about it almost everywhere. I mean, um, so before your interview, I, um, there was an interview that I spoke on, and I told him that this is this is more than what I can explain because. Mm. And I just have to give glory to the one who made it happen because it's not because I'm the most skilled illustrator. It's not because um, I'm the most talented or I'm the most creative. Right. Or it's not because others haven't thought about it also. Yeah. But I just felt that just go what go on it. So I just, yeah, that's just it. That's awesome. I mean, that like, I again, I assumed that this had been out for a while and I just hadn't seen it, but it was like, this all you you felt that something tugging in your spirit you didn't feel like it you went through with it you pray and then you put it out and then it just takes off just that fast god is awesome well won't, won't he do it as they say um thank you for sharing that story i think that's going to be helpful to a lot of people um okay so last couple of things i read somewhere now you tell me if this is right I, I, this might not be right but i read somewhere that nyu i think um or some schools right um I think it was New York University, or I don't know if you saw this. I saw, I think it was New York, NYU was saying, hey, come here after med school for a PhD or something like that. Like you're getting, are you getting these kinds of offers? Yeah. Uh, so I actually got an offer to do my, to, to do my, to do a PhD in um, New York Institute of Technology after medical school. But yeah. I mean, that's, that's great. Yeah. So I actually said, ah, I'm going to accept that. But for me right now, I, 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 I'm looking forward to making, probably doing a medical school in the U.S. So if, if those opportunities come up, I'm going to take that right now. So my focus is probably making a change from Ukraine to the U.S. or U.K. But oh. I mean, I told you. Yeah. Yeah, you know so what? We need, to, we need to see. I would be thrilled to, to have you as a fellow alum at Harvard. I'm going to put it out there for Larry. Larry, perhaps I shouldn't call him Larry, the president of the university who signs all our emails, President Lawrence uh, Bacow, he, he signs our emails. Um, Larry at the end. So yeah, let's put it out there, right? Let's bring you, let's, let's bring you. I wonder if we can get, get you um, at Harvard. I'd love that. I would love that, of course. Why not? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's been amazing. So, but I, I, I mean, I took the offer, hoping that after medical school in Ukraine, I would yeah. come over there and do that. Yeah. But, but my plans is that uh, if I get more offers in, for medical school, actually in the US or UK, yeah. I would take that. Uh, of course, do that. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, uh, wrapping up, you can see that um, just on a couple of, of other random questions, I have my bow uh, earrings because I'm in the holiday spirit. And I know different people, like for, for different people around the world, this is the holiday season in different ways. What, what's it? How, how's it for you? Is it what, what are the holidays like for you? Very normal. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very normal for me. Like, because normally I, I'm not used to. Um, a whole lot of fancy stuff, so just feel normal for me. I, I'm, most times on, on Christmas, on 25th, I, I walk. I walk. So you work. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just really normal for me. I, I don't feel so special about it. Just that yeah. from time, um, family that travel, come back home. Uh, yeah, it's good to see people that you haven't seen in years again. But it's just pretty normal for me. Yeah. Okay. Do you have um, siblings that do any of this too? Like, are, are you come from an artistic family? Yes, I have four siblings. Um, Three boys and a girl, so I'm second born. Okay. Yeah. Or our parents, or either one of your parents, like in the arts or medicine? No, um, my dad is just um, a trader. Um, okay. I lost my mom in oh. 2011, so mm. just my dad. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right, sorry to hear about your loss. And it's so exciting that like you're carving your own lane, right? With this art and with this medicine, and, and I'm just excited about it. So, okay, so as we wrap up, um, I knew you were, you had to go fund me um, if, if you want to like drop what that is and also your IG handle or anything that, um, that you'd like to, to leave here that I can share with people to support you um, and, and continue to promote you. All right. So um, the goal for me was to raise tuition for my for school. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I had raised the tuition. I had closed the goal for me. So the goal for me is closed now. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so. That 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 is another awesome thing when I think about God and think about what you did and think about I don't know how long you had had it there, but like that I know when I looked it was past the like the what you the amount you needed like it exceeded that and that probably happened very quickly. So I'm I'm excited about that for you. Ah, it was like twice of when I needed, so I just had to close it. 
There you go. <laughs> okay, yeah. and then um, yeah, your IG. IG is um, a very illustrate. Uh, I think I just put that in the in the chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, do that, and then I'll I'll add it to your stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, is that? Do you go by Barry more, or is it Chi Dia Barry? What do you? Chi Dia Barry, but Chi Dia Barry. So Barry is just part of the name. But, yes. Um, all right, Chi Dia Barry. All right. Well, Chi Dia Barry. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I can't wait to meet you in person one day. Do you know when you'll be in the States? Any plans to come to the States anytime? I have an opportunity comes, of course, I'll be in the States. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope to, to meet you in person one day and I appreciate you and good luck with everything that you're doing. It, it's, I think it's awesome. I think you're awesome. And thank you so much for um, taking the time to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me.